On this video, we're gonna be making a printer cart, but not just any printer cart. This is a designer printer cart. Why? Because you guys are Ninja Word workers. Even if you're just getting started, this project is totally obtainable. So don't think it's not. Um, you don't have to have all the fancy tools that we have in the shop. A lot of this, as a matter of fact, can pretty much be done with a handsaw in all reality and a drill. So do keep that in mind as you're watching this video. I cannot stress that enough. Um, but uh, if you have fancier tools like, you know, a table saw or a, or a chop saw or miter saw or whatever, then all the more easy, right? So anyway, on that note, um, this thing's pretty cool. It's actually part of a uh, three-part series that we made for a children's homeschool table for two kids. Um, and this is kind of a bonus uh, object that we put in there because this isn't technically part of the table. So uh, if you see that in the video uh, as we're kind of going through stuff, you'll know what that's from. We do have that listed here on the, the channel under the videos tab. So definitely check that out. But in the meantime, uh, let's go ahead and get ourselves moving along. But before we do, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell notification icon for all of our uh, newest woodworking videos and our newest tool review videos that are coming out. So let's get to the build. All right, so we've already went ahead and uh, milled the board down to uh, seven eighths. So we decided to go with that. You go with something a little bit thinner, maybe like three quarter. Might make it a little bit easier math wise. We already went ahead and got it down to that. We want to keep our rails roughly around about the same width as their length. And this is just so this way we have one constant measurement to work with. You could do this totally different. You can go with a little bit longer rail, wider rail, whatever it is that you want. This is just inspiration. So out of fairness. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we have our board right here. We're just gonna kiss it up next to our blade, which will give us our distance we're looking for. And then we're just gonna slide our fence right in here and get that ready to rock and roll. So this way we don't actually have to do any real true measuring and every board will basically be the same size. So outside of that, we're gonna go ahead and uh, lower our blade down. So that's where we're just popping over the top. Safety first, as they say. And there we go. So we're all ready to go. Got our micro jig on board, ready to rock. Definitely not sponsored. Uh, would be awesome if they did, but not sponsored. And uh, then we're gonna go ahead and do this. So let's get this rocking. Okay, so we've got all the different pieces that we're gonna be needing as far as for the framework. So we'll go ahead and start uh, working on sizing these out and making these all look good. So that's our next part, let's do it. So we've got our stop block set to 16 inches. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut these and these will be for the back. And these are going to be for, again, for the frame, these ones are going to be 18 inches for our build. All right, and these will be for the back framing section. So back and front rather, I should say. Uh, so these ones will be 17 inches. So let's do this. All right, so we set up a simple jig. It's just a few pieces of, uh, well, MDF uh, that are stacked on top of each other. Uh, not really a big deal. Uh, we've actually used this for some other projects. We have a video where we uh, made uh, uh, basically flat castle joints. And this is basically the same jig that we used for that. Um, we're just gonna use it here for the bridal joint. As you can see, it's uh, definitely had some use over time. <laughs> But, uh, you know, that's kind of how these things work. So basically all we're going to do on this is we're just going to 
go ahead and get this right where we're basically on the line that we drew here. And that's approximately a third of uh, what the stock size is. So the theory behind this is, is that we cut this out, then we turn back around and we go and we, we can build the other ones and it'll be a lot easier. Uh, so kind of a tongue and groove kind of a thing is basically what a bridal train is. So by doing this, we'll have that already kind of set up ahead of time. So yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and run these through. And then once we're done with these, uh, then we'll work on cutting the tongues. So that's really about it. All right, let's get started. All right, once you're done with uh, cutting those, uh, you'll have something that looks more or less like this. So it'll look like a couple of like little pitchforks or something. And uh, this, is, uh, this is basically the uh, saddle per se. And then uh, at least I think that's what that's called. We're gonna go with the fact that it's called probably called the saddle. I'll put it up here on the screen if I'm wrong. I bet you it's a saddle. All right, anyway. Let's go ahead and uh, get the tongue part, or I guess the bride part, because it is a bridal joint, right? So, seems like that makes sense. Anyway, the woodworking terms are normally not that important. The important thing is, is that you actually know what you're doing at the end of the video. So always remember that. Let's do it. Okay, cutting the other side is basically the same thing. We're just going to go and cut right here over to the board. That's all we're really doing. So pretty simple for the most part. Uh, and then we'll have our tongue part. And of course it's at the same height, so we don't have to worry about height deviation problems. Now, if you're not totally certain if you got the measurement right, you can always overcut this by a little bit and then just come back and correct it later. So don't feel like you have to get this like dead on right off the bat. It's better to over or undercut versus overcut. So always remember that when dealing with these types of joints. It's real finicky, so it's real easy to screw up. So try not to screw it up. There you go. All right, let's do this. So now we went ahead and got our joints cut. And as you can see, bring this up here to the camera. These fit nice and tight, just a little bit over uh, on both sides. So we'll just sand that down and we'll be good to go. So remember it's not, again, it's, it's that whole thing of you want to be close enough, but you don't want to be so close that you're like perfect because perfection is going to actually cause a flaw. So it's one of those things, especially with a joint like this. Um, but once this is glued up, this will be a super strong joint. Um, we'll probably go ahead and put a dowel through it anyway, just because it's decorative. And we're going to have dowels out elsewhere on the project, but this is a cool little joint. One of those things that unfortunately probably won't be seen a lot, but it's kind of neat that it's there. So there you go. All right, these next parts are basically going to be for the general frame. So it's going to be for the paper tray area. So we're going to cut these at about 4.75 because two pieces of paper, two reams of paper stacked on top of each other is uh, basically 4.50, four and a half inches. So we're going to do this at four and three quarters or 4.75. And uh, then we're just going to make four of these. So pretty simple. So for this part, we're just gonna go ahead and drill holes through our dowels. So this way we can go ahead and connect them to the other pieces. This is kind of bypassing the whole need to go and do additional um, methods, you might say, like half laps and things like that. Those all work great too, don't take me wrong. Uh, but I like the dowels, I think dowels look really cool. So we're gonna go, and, uh, we're gonna go ahead and drill these holes for the dowels 
and uh, go ahead and get this going. Now, keep in mind what we're going to be doing is we are going to be using a drill press, but before somebody points this out and says, every tool in the shop, yes, somebody actually commented that, true story. Um, you don't have to have a drill press. Like, seriously, you could do this with a hand drill if you're just accurate about keeping you know, a straight line. I'm terrible at that, so there you go. There's an admittance, and uh, I know that. So, therefore, I use drill press. That, and honestly, we're only human. So, anyway, on that note, uh, we're going to go ahead and do this and get this knocked out. We're going to be using 3 8 inch dowels, so we're using a 3 8 inch bit, which will make the dowel a little bit loose, but that's okay. The glue will cause it to swell and fill in the, the difference. So let's not worry about that too much, but yeah, let's get to drilling. All right, there we go. We got our uh, holes drilled through, and like I said, we're doing through dowels. We'll be gluing onto this surface here, and then we'll be putting the dowel through here, which allows us to align the next block that's going to be connected to it without actually having to do all the math. So, kind of nice. So, we'll go ahead and get to that, and uh, that'll be fun. Okay, so we've got our, we CA glued our one piece here to our other piece, so this way they kind of have to stick together. And so, at this point, we'll go ahead and drill through. So this is pretty simple. We're just basically, the CA glue is only there basically to hold it in place while we're drilling. And then once we're done drilling, then we can go ahead and just run the dowel through and we're good to go. So here we go. All right. We don't need it like super deep, but we want to get it a little ways in there, which, uh, in this case, we did. So now, we can put some glue in there and then we'll put the dowel in. Now, the dowel out here is just a coverall for the most part, and that's going to be true on at least one side. So when you're doing this, if you're going to do it this way, is you'll do this for like the face frame side because we don't want to worry about um, actual torque being on it. So when you go to do this one, this one's best because the reason this one's going to be running along, we want to make sure that this one actually has a full dowel so it's got that full length to work with. And I'll explain that and show that as we go along here. But right now let's go ahead and get the first dowel in. Let's get that in there like that. And then we'll just kind of push our dowel in. Alright, so this way we actually have real glue holding it. Let's use our cutoff saw here. Alright, cool. And we're good. So, now I've got that all set up there. And uh, we have one through dowel already in the mix. So we'll uh, sand that off later and then we'll kind of take care of it. But as you can see right now, the dowel actually goes all the way through the piece. Um, and then it has its little spot up here on top. And so that'll give this a little bit more reinforcement because it's connected here and here. And then this here is just basically a plug on this side. This one will actually go all the way through. So that's basically the difference between the two of them. Okay, so we got our primary frame already squared away. Uh, so this is basically your complete frame per se. 
So what we're going to do here for this section is we're going to go ahead and take our, our four and three quarter um, frame pieces basically and we're going to go ahead and we're going to clamp them uh, in their positions this way when we go to drill they won't fly off. Um, the super glue technique kind of works but this one's going to work the best for any place that you can have a double clamp down surface. So we're going to go ahead and do a double clamp down here. It's, we're going to clamp it right down in this area so it's clamped to the pole, to the uh, frame. And then we'll do the same thing on this side. And then that'll lock all that together. And then we're done with that part. Then we can start removing the frame components. We're going to leave these on here though. So that way we have stability while doing uh, this part. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, so we got the dowels all squared away here in the back, um, just so that way we can kind of temporarily put them there. We don't really want to set them just yet. We just kind of want it in position. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take uh, these couple of pieces of wood and we're going to figure out our angle. So we're not going to sit here and use an angle finder and get all scientific. We're just going to do some real basic stuff. So since this is here we're going to take the tip of this one and it's going to match up to here so that's way when we do our cut it's right there so we'll go ahead and match that up and then this one over here we're going to get this tip right here and match it up at the top of this and in theory this should give us our cut angles so got that one there this one here now keep in mind, you don't have to be like rocket science perfect on this. You just want to be close, um, like 99.99% close kind of a thing. So are you going to get a perfect cut every single time? Eh, it's woodworking. Sometimes things don't always balance out the way you'd like them to. But in this case, doing this method here, odds are you're probably going to get it right um, every time. So that should do well. Okay, so now with these in place, we'll go ahead and uh, make our measurement here. Okay, cool. So now what we have is our approximate distances. So this tells us here. And this one here, we're just going to have to modify that a little bit because that's not totally going to work the way that we have that set up there. So let's go ahead and actually what we're going to do is go ahead and cut this one first. We're going to go ahead and do that on the miter saw. You could do this on table saw, but a miter saw is going to be a lot easier to do it on. And that way we have our general angle. Then we can go ahead and work on the next part. All right, so let's go ahead and get cutting. Okay, it looks like that worked out to be almost a perfect 25 degree angle. That'll work out pretty well. Let's do it. Cool. All right. So we're going to test this over on the bench and then we'll be back. Okay, cool. So we got our other angle. Looks like it's uh, again 25 degrees. Okay, cool. So this should be solid as a rock. Okay, and just to kind of show like what actually we're doing here is, is that we cut here and cut here. So this way we'd have two angles like that, which then gives you a handle here to pull on when you go to pull the cart. Um, obviously, this doesn't have the doweling and stuff like that in it necessarily in order to be able to make it work right. But we'll get that here done here in a little bit. 
anyway, long story made short, this is basically the idea, and then we're just going to do the same thing. Same thing on the other side. So that's really about it. So let's go and get to that. Okay, so this is the basic uh, framework. So our printer will go in here, paper will go down here. It's basically it. And as you can see, we've got our nice sloping, sharp angles uh, at each point. So now we're going to go ahead and drill, hopefully straight, uh, directly into these and get that rocket and rolling. So we're going to get on that now. Okay, so change direction a little bit here on the project. Originally I was gonna put a through dowel through here, down through and into here. That's not gonna work. So we're gonna do it instead as a traditional dowel. So we're actually gonna be drilling up into the foot and then down into here. So we'll do some measuring and stuff, make sure that happens. But uh, that's basically what we're doing on this part here. So just go ahead and if you got clamps in the way, just get them out of the way because that's exactly what they're doing, staying in the way, and start drilling. Now remember, you don't have to go too deep on here. That's not the point to go too deep. Uh, point is is to just go deep enough so that way you can get the dowel in so we're just going to mark our two reference points I already marked the other one so your frame should be bendable enough at this point to actually do what I'm doing so if you're doing this exact model okay and this tells us where to drill the next one which is actually going to be right into one of our dowels which is fine. There we go. And remember with dowels, we just need a little lip. So we don't have to go too crazy here. So we're just gonna go like this. Mark. Turn around to this one. And actually it looks like they're about the same really. Mark it anyway just for fun. Okay, so that means we need to go to right about here. That's about double. We'll cut that and then put that in there and we're ready for glue. So we got everything we need squared away here. So just go ahead and get this glued up real fast. So just a simple thing of dropping a little glue. Put that in there. And we'll just use our blue tape this time. This is not a high stress kind of a thing. So let's go like this, push this down, make sure that this is in position, which it is. So then we can just do one of these. And then just to make sure everything stays where it needs to, go ahead and do one on the other side too, just for fun. All right, cool. All right, cool. So now if there's anything that's going to be wrong with this, it's going to be like maybe a little bit off or something like that. You can just sand it and correct it. So and then we'll do the same thing on this side over here. And uh, that should be about it for this specific part. Okay, so when you get to the front, uh, you're going to have a little bit of a challenge here. So you have this odd angle, right? You're probably going to want to put a bar across here for stabilization reasons. So we came up with this. And this here, let's see here, there we go. So you can see is a kind of a weird cut. So this is actually cut on the table saw like this. And we skipped this because this is a fairly dangerous cut. So I didn't want somebody coming back and be like, ah, oh, you know, this is dangerous. Well, 
yeah, okay, it's not the greatest cut in the world. But point is, you can do this even being an amateur. You just need to have a smaller type of push stick. So as you can see, this one has a safety at the back here to allow you to go and push into it, which this one's about to be replaced. And then it has, of course, a long bottom. So this way, when you're pushing, we only have to get about halfway through the cut and we're good to go. So anyway, I just wanted to show you folks that. Uh, I thought that was kind of fun, just so you can kind of get like a little idea of why you would go to that much trouble. We're just gonna go ahead and put this in here. Now, if you want, you could do this a couple of different ways. You can either match it up so this way just the front matches in, which just gives a nice thin handle to kind of pull on, uh, yet stable at the same time. Or the other option you can do is actually make it like literally as long as this and they go that route. And since this is actually hidden, you could actually take this all the way back to here. So you could put a thicker piece in there if you wanted. Um, I opted for the thinner piece. I think that that looks a lot nicer. Um, and uh, honestly, I think it'll be a little bit easier because there's gonna be, my kids are gonna be grabbing onto it and their hands are smaller. So that kind of makes a little bit more sense for my application. Yours might be a little bit different though. So I just wanted to go and throw that little bit in there uh, because well, I think it's kind of neat and uh, I think it's kind of a fun uh, design to really kind of challenge your woodworking skills and whatnot. So again, this one's uh, done by about a 25 degree angle. It seems like most of the angles on here are about 25 degrees. Um, this one should be too, because this was 25, so they have to kind of match. Uh, but anyway, that's basically it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, dowel this in and get it all glued up. And then we're gonna go ahead and do some sanding because right now it looks kind of ugh, right? We're gonna make it look good, because that's what we do. All right, let's do this. In this part, we're gonna go ahead and cut down the actual area where the printer and the paper are gonna sit for the top and bottom. Uh, so this is pretty simple. You can do this a couple of different ways. You could just put your wood in, draw a line around it, and there you go. Or you can do it the mathematical way, which is just simply uh, go ahead and measure in each section. I would recommend three measurements, one from here, 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 one from here. Just because sometimes things will kind of do what they want. It's wood, it moves literally, right? But we're gonna go ahead and cut this down into uh, little sections and then we're gonna go and glue it together. Um, this, is a, this is actually poplar, not walnut like it probably looks like. So it's a little bit softer wood. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, do it like a dowel or something to join this with. And then we'll actually use pocket screws initially just to stabilize the board. And this also allows for a little bit of wood movement. And then we'll put in dowels to go and fill in for the additional decorative element. So that's basically how we're gonna do this part. So on that note, lots of talking, let's get to sawing. Okay, so with a little tiny bit of fine tuning, um, we were able to get this uh, nailed in perfectly. Fits nice and flat along here and here. Same thing on the bottom. Everything's pretty much in square. It was already kind of in square for the most part anyway, but you always still want to double check all your measurements. So uh, at this point, then we're just gonna go ahead and move on to the glue up on these. And then, uh, yeah, we can pretty much move on to doing the final cuts and then pocket holing them, throwing the dowels in. We're gonna be good to rock. Let's do this. All right, so we're gonna be using uh, Rockler's uh, breadlock system for this. If you don't have one of these, they're actually pretty awesome. You don't need this. You could do a doweling jig. You could do glue it just on its own. This just gives it a little bit more reinforcement because it's basically like uh, five dowels pasted together in a sense. So but it's basically kind of like a domino. If you had a Festool domino, you could uh, basically equivalently do the same thing we're gonna do here. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, but this is what we have, so we're not like rich. So that's the thing. So anyway, let's get to this. Okay. Cool, so when you're done with uh, these, you just pop them in. Sometimes it might need a little bit of hammering, but uh, for the most part, they'll just kind of slide in, slide out, just like a domino would, but they're super tight. So uh, you don't have to worry about them uh, sliding around when you're doing glue ups, which is really nice, let me tell you. 
All right, so I guess that done. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do the rest of this and then uh, off to glue up, so here we go. Time for the glue up. And like I said, we're using the Rockler deals there. It's not uh, sponsored or anything, but it does seem to be a pretty good system. So we'll just go ahead and get to gluing. All right, so we're, just gonna, we're gonna go ahead and use our hide glue and uh, just go ahead and just fill in the entire section here. So that's why we've got a nice glue bond all the way across the joint. And this is really, really important because of course we wanna make sure that we've got a full seal when we're going through the process. All right, cool. And then all we have to do is just go ahead and insert our, all we have to do is just go ahead and insert these, which are our bread locks. Go ahead and pop these right in here. And then we can go and move on to the next one. Okay, all glued up. Now we'll uh, give it uh, its time here overnight and come back and there we go. All right, so we went ahead and got the panels all done and now we're getting ready to do the next part. So originally I was thinking of doing pocket screws on this I was like, you know what, we don't have to. Because we have this cool little rockler jig, right, that we put the bread, uh, the bread locks in. So I was thinking, I was like, you know what, that works just like a doweling jig. So in essence, you could totally do this with a doweling jig. I'm just being fancy, just for clarity here. But uh, so I'm gonna actually use this to actually go ahead and do dowels. I'll put the dowels in, that'll support it right off the bat. I don't have to worry about it. So that's my uh, concept on this. Like I said, you could do this with a dowling jig or you could do pocket holes underneath. I mean, it's kind of kind of whatever you want to do here, whatever tools you have access to. That's really how these things work, right? So uh, no pressure on having to go out and buy this system. Um, but yeah, so we'll go ahead and get to that and uh, run through the doweling procedure. Like I said, um, you can use a dowel jig for this or you can use this for this. It doesn't really matter. Uh, either system would work just fine. Ultimately, you're just sticking a dowel on wood, so let's not make it too interesting, right? So anyway, on that note, let's get to it. All right, so we're all lined up here, ready to go. Uh, so we're just gonna go for it. Pretty simple, really. All right, cool. And of course we have no bleed through because of course we have it set up correctly. So, uh, so we'll go ahead and move on to the uh, next one, which I'm just going to do on the other side. There we go. Cool. That is out of there. So now we're ready to go on that. Just wipe off your excess. If you get a little bit in there, it's not that big of a deal. It's not going to really hurt anything. Um, the best thing to do is try to get that out of there. We're going to do a little bit of filling in here just so this way it looks more uniform at the end. But as you can see, we've already created a nice solid base already. So we're just going to go around the rest of it and uh, throw in the rest of the dowels. And then uh, we'll do the same thing on the bottom. And then uh, you guys will get to see what the final product looks like. All right, so we got all of our shelves in. As you can see, got our paper hanging out in here. This thing's pretty much ready to go. Um, as it sits, we could just literally throw a printer on it and be done with it, but come on. We gotta make this a little bit cooler, right? You know it. So what we're gonna do is uh, go ahead and work on uh, putting on some doors on here. And so we're basically just gonna use a bunch of these uh, leftover strips that I had uh, for primarily safety and uh, go ahead and build a kind of a wireframe door to go along with everything else that's on here. So uh, I think that'll look really cool. And uh, then after that, we'll uh, attach our wheels because we've got our wheels ready to go. And uh, this thing will be rolling out of here. Sorry, bad pun. Actually, we have to go and put it through a little bit of finish, but other than that, it'll be pretty much ready to rock. So this is gonna be awesome. Let's go and get those doors done. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut this, uh, these extra pieces down. Uh, we've got a little part here. We're gonna leave the imperfections in there because honestly, I think they look kind of cool. Kind of gives it that strange 
like rustic look that like you're kind of going for, but at the same time, you kind of have this very eccentric mid-center, mid-century modern kind of a look. So kind of playing around with the two concepts, but I'm sure a lot of that will get sanded away, but it looks cool right now. So let's do this. Okay, so this is basically our configuration. So it's very similar to the front, just measured it out to work with my specific hinges. And I put tape back here, so this way you can kind of hold it together while we're gluing together, so that way we keep some accuracy. So just like before, we're gonna add dowels to this, so we'll wanna, of course, do some precision doweling. Um, again, dowel jig, it's just gotta have it. Um, but we're just gonna put a little bit of glue in here. This is mostly to kind of keep it together for when we go to do the dowels. The dowels are really what's gonna actually do the work on this. But need a little something something in here to kind of keep that all together because trying to do a dowel on here and keep it precise is pretty difficult. So easiest way to do it is just add glue just to give it a tiny bit of strength. Let it sit for like 30 minutes or so and should be good to rock and roll. And there we go. That's basically it. So after this, we'll uh, go ahead and uh, use our uh, little jig to put the dowels in. And I'll just run one right up there, one down here, down here, up there, up there, down there. And then this is done. Then we're done with that door. Then you can move on to the next one, attach it, and uh, call it good. So. All right, so we'll go ahead and let this dry and uh, move on, get the other one done, and then there we go. All right, so we got our doors all uh, glued up, and now we have a basic framework. So now we're just gonna go ahead and use what basically we're using is a doweling jig, and we're just going to follow our line because I put lines in the center, and we're just gonna follow that line straight in, just drill in there, put a dowel in, some glue, we're done. Easy as that. Let's do it. Looking good, all right. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next one. Cut that, or rather drill that, put some more in there. And then uh, we'll basically do uh, point here, point here, and point here, and then this will give it some more rigidity. So we're not just end grain to side grain because you know how that works. So, all right, I'm gonna get that done and then uh, move on to uh, the next fun part. All right, so we got all the doweling done, so we're all good to go on that. So now we're going to go ahead and drill the holes for the handles, which we're actually going to do at midpoint. So since these are really light doors, it's probably not a big deal. On a normal door, you'd normally point, put it over here on the entry point. Uh, but in these case, we're going to do midpoint because otherwise the two will collide here. So that is kind of a problem. But then again, like I said, light doors, not generally a big issue where you put the handle as long as it's on one of the parts you're gonna be opening it. So if you're wondering why we're doing it that way, now you know. But uh, we've went ahead and uh, drawn out the uh, centerpiece here. So this is where we're gonna be drilling into is right on that middle of that plus or cross, whatever you wanna call it. So let's go and get to it. Okay, now that we got that done, we're gonna go ahead and uh, run our screw through the back. As you can see, got nice good contact here. So then we'll just go ahead and twist this on. And there we go. Nice centered door, not bad. And uh, this, like I said, this will work out perfectly fine because you can see we got a lot of good twists. So you can have some torque on there, it's still gonna be good. 
And of course we have dowels in here which are giving it extra support. So overall, things in pretty good shape. Uh, next we'll uh, go ahead and do the door hinges and uh, get those done and then we're off to finishing. Yay. Okay, so as you can see, we already have one hinge in. I'm gonna show you what we did here for the hinge though. So we're gonna go ahead and put this right here. And that'll help us kind of balance it out. Now I'm balancing my uh, hinge off from the, or door rather, off from the base. So that's basically where we're lining that up. So for this type of hinge, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go beyond the threshold and then just kind of get it there as close as we can to level and then go from that point. So first thing we'll do is go ahead and drill in our first one. You'll notice we're not actually going and doing the top one. A couple of reasons. Number one is the drill doesn't meet there, but secondly is this is already overkill as it is. So this is fine actually. So we'll just go ahead and put these in. I do recommend using a screwdriver to do this and not a powered screwdriver. There you go, cool. So we got one door and we'll go ahead and uh, got the one door that's opening and closing there. So now what we'll do is go ahead and do the other door, get it all seated and then, uh, yeah, we're done with uh, the doors. What I'll probably put in here is a little magnet is what I'm thinking about doing is put a magnet in here and then a little metal piece, but we'll see by the end of the video what I decide to do. So we got all of our doors set up. They're all hinged together and all that stuff, like as you can see here. Um, now we need to go ahead and put some magnets in so this way we can keep them closed because obviously these hinges aren't going to do that on their own. So we're going to go ahead and just use some earth magnets, which are basically these. They don't want to come apart, but if you ever dealt with these, you know how strong these things truly are. So what we're gonna do is take our, well, basically doweling machine at this point with the way we've been using it. And we set, we set our bit. So it's just slightly below the surface. And then we're, of course you're gonna need one of these little collars if you wanna be able to have good accuracy. This will keep you from going all the way through the wood. And you can use this again on a regular doweling jig. You don't have to have the Rockler one. Um, so no nasty comments about that. It won't work. Anyway, um, yeah, so you don't have to have a doweling jig, but you do have to have something that has a stop collar on it for the bits. So this way you don't go too deep. Because of course we don't want to go all the way through. We want to just go through about roughly the, the thickness of the actual magnet times two. And this is so we can put a dowel over it and then we can make it look like it's all enclosed which will give a nicer look i think in the end um, you could leave the magnets just showing out and then all you have to do is super glue them in and you can do it that way but in our case i kind of want to hide them and uh, just kind of enjoy the magic of why the wood locks itself together which i think looks way cooler so we're gonna go ahead and get onto that right now just so i go over what we were doing so that way it wasn't really confusing when you go to see it in the end so Let's get to it. What I've done here is I put lines to indicate where the actual door sits. So this line here indicates where it starts. This is where it finishes and this is about center. So I didn't like really measure it out. I just kind of eyeballed it, but honestly, that's close enough. So now you got a pretty good idea of like where your center is. Now we'll just use this again. And this is where this comes in pretty handy over using like a conventional uh, doweling jig because we can actually just go and put that on there and then we can take our clamp out and then we can just literally just pop it right on there. There we go. So let's go ahead and lock that down. So now we're all in there. So now all we have to do is just uh, add our drill bit into our drill, do a quick drill in, throw the magnet in, probably glue that in the back too and then we're good to go. So let's do this. Okay, so now we have our hole in here, which does not go all the way through, which is what we want. And so now all we have to do is just take one of our earth magnets, doesn't matter which side, and we can just push it in there. So uh, in this case here, I'm gonna have to probably relieve that hole just a tiny bit. 
but uh, ultimately that should do it. Okay, after you're done uh, drilling all that, then you can just simply uh, go ahead and insert your magnet. So we'll just go ahead and do that here real quick. See if it's in there nice and snug, which is what we want. And now we can just go ahead and put a dowel right on top of that and uh, seal that hole up all nice like. So that'll definitely uh, look really nice. Well, the same thing on the other side and then on each door and then we're done. Yay. All right, cool. So now you guys got a chance to see that. And uh, I guess you get to see the uh, next part where we are uh, using it. So here we go. All right, so we got all the finishing done. And uh, now we just need to basically put the wheels on. So pretty simple. Uh, let's go ahead and go through that. All right, for the screws that we have, we're going to be using a 7 16th uh, bit on here. Uh, these are actually really, really nice. So basically all we have to do is just go like this. This is actually made for door hinges, but works just as well. We're just simply going to go ahead and drop in our screw. There you go. Okay, cool. So we got that in there. And uh, then we just get to do that same thing the whole way around. All right, it's all done. Printer card's ready to go. All we need to do now is add a printer. Because, well, that's kind of important, right? So, um, go ahead and get that going. You can see we do have a little defect in here where the door didn't sit exactly right. That's something I'll fix later. I just wanted to kind of get this moving and grooving and we'll deal with the fidgety parts later. So let's get this printer and let's get moving. Okay, so we got the printer card out here. We're ready to rock. So go ahead and throw some paper in here. Let's see how this goes. So, so far so good. Slide the paper over there. And we're in. All right, cool. Of course, those nice magnet magnets in there are really helping out a lot. So the second thing we'll do is go ahead and load the printer. Um, this is actually designed to be a little bit easier to do from the back. So that's exactly the way we're gonna do this. So just take our big old laser printer here. Nice thing about getting a good sand on your uh, final on this is things just slides in like it's on oil. It's great. Um, so you can do a couple of things here. You can either leave it so the screen's visible or you can slide it forward so that way, you know, the paper just kind of comes up to here and stops. I'm actually going to leave it where the screen is a little visible. So you're going to let it hang off the, well, it doesn't really hang off the back that much. Yeah, it really doesn't. All right, cool. So that's all good to go and left a little bit of space up here up front, which is fine, um, nothing wrong with that. This will allow us to go ahead and open up our paper tray as we need to, and we have no obstruction, so, because of course it's all smooth all the way through here. So that's basically it. So we'll go ahead and plug this in, and uh, then we're done, so not bad. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and show how this rolls now that we've got it all completed. And you can see that comes out nice and easy. And then we have access to the back. And on the back here, as you can see, we have access to the uh, paper system. So if we happen to have like a jam or something like that, we're already good to go. Power cable and ethernet cable are all easy, easily accessible. It's pretty much good to go. So not bad. All right, so you got a chance to see how this thing's built. Uh, how it works and uh, what it does. Uh, let's go down to the comments what you think of this build. It's kind of an interesting one, needless to say. Uh, if you're wondering about the wheels, uh, I'll try to find some comparable wheels on uh, Amazon. Uh, we bought this from Harbor Freight in all reality. Uh, overall, this build wasn't very expensive, so you're talking maybe about 30, 40 bucks. And keep in mind that we got like premium woods in this, which you don't necessarily need to have. Uh, so that is something to kind of keep in mind. So this was uh, Naughty uh, Elder up here, and then this down here is actually roasted poplar. So ultimately it's poplar, it's just kind of like a naturally burnt look from the uh, sawmill. So that's really all it is. 
and then just some uh, cheap discount hardware that we had gotten from Amazon and uh, Lowe's, and that's really about it. So yeah, probably about 20, or probably 30, 40 bucks for the whole thing if you want to go with the really nice stuff, you know, including the dowels and stuff. So anyway, uh, that all being said, uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification icon for all of our newest videos. Until next time, stay safe in the shop.